Chris Moody with CNN. Hey, man. Can we walk and talk real okay. quick with you? All right. What walk. impact has Trump had on activism in communities of color? I, I think it's probably galvanized people. Um, I, I think people feel that there's the need to be um, active, there's a need to be involved, there's a need to have their voices heard in opposition to some of the policies that the president and people in the administration have been pushing. So um, I'm actually kind of heartened to see the numbers of people, not only in minority communities, but uh, really around the country, uh, people who are you know, expressing their views and trying to shape, um, shape policies. Some of the biggest names in democratic politics are here at the convention. I think all communities have been um, activated and inspired to have their voices heard because they feel their voices have not been heard. Now, do you see all of the active players? Isn't it ironic that they all end up in the same place? So now we know where the NWACP is. They're with those people. They're with the Democratic Party. They're with those people that have been playing us for years. They're with the people. See, this is what I'm trying to get you guys to understand here. The NWACP, they're all in on it. It's one big plot against us because they have all sold out. They're all under control of the Illuminati and they're all under control of this power structure. We don't have nobody that's fighting in our behalf anymore. This is what I'm telling you. We got to go for ourselves now. This fight belongs to the people because we can't trust the politicians. We can't trust none of these actors, none of these rappers, none of these celebrities because they got them all in their pockets. They're all part of the illuminated ones. They're all a part of them. Look at this. Bernie Sanders, all of these people. Remember Bernie Sanders was running and, and then he opted out for Biden to come in? They're playing just as a chess game. You're looking at a full-edge, ongoing chess game against the interests of black people. Look at this. Um, in this administration, and I find it very exciting. I, and I'm finding also that it's people of every generation, of every gender, of every... And we ain't seen Kamala Harris since she got the nomination for vice president. They, they, they have her in the back of the uh, White House. Like, you remember you used to go into the restaurants and they would have all the, the Negro cooks in the back, you know what I'm saying, for the people in the front wouldn't know that their food was actually getting cooked by a bunch of Negroes. You remember, this is what it looked like because you don't hear nothing about her. She's like, where, you, where they got to hit her at? You know, where, where's she hitting at? I mean, where's she at? You don't never see her. She's never visible. And I just say, well, she must be in the back cooking the food or something because I don't ever see Kamala Harris. When the last time you seen her? They're playing one big chess game against us. This is what I'm trying to get you to see. All these people are all active players against the benefits and against the, 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 the black culture, against black interests, against us in general. We got some heavy hitters, and these people are not playing. What I'm trying to get black people to understand that we, the people, have to stick together. We have to come together, and we have to fight for ourselves because we ain't got no friends out here. I'm sorry. They got them all in their pocket. Look at this. These are all active players. Watch them. A geographic area in our country, and, and so that is certainly a silver lining to what's been going on. So there's a group of people following Bernie Sanders to the NAACP convention. He's got a panel here with a couple other lawmakers. He's very down to earth. Uh, he has a very, a very even track record. Um, he's been with the struggle. I wanted to get a picture with him to like show my friends and family back home that like, <laughs> um, I don't know the work that we're. Sorry, but I had to stop the video. What has Bernie Sanders done for black people? Don't worry, I'll wait doing is important and like, I don't know, it means a lot. The NAACP is the oldest civil rights organization in the country and they're trying to figure out how they remain relevant into the 21st century. It's a, a very important historic organization where a lot of people are wondering like, what's their work now? And I think the NAACP itself. I'm worrying, I'm, 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 I'm worried and I'm also <laughs> very concerned about what is their role what is the nwc 
Oh, man, this got me so twisted up right now. I'm sorry, people. But the NWACP, yeah, what is their role? What are they doing now? They're the most non-active. You know, they've been around for years. They did their due diligence, but now you don't hear about them no more. So what is the role of the, of the NWACP? And you hear her even asking the question, what is the role of the NWACP in the 21st century? Nothing, because they haven't done nothing. They have they have been nowhere. That is the role. The role now for the NWACP in in these this new 21st century is to take a back seat and let the powers that be take it over and let them run it. That what it is. They're going to take a back seat and whatever happens to us or whatever plans they're going to lay out for us, they're going to kick back and they're just going to watch it happen is wondering that as well. One of the things that people must understand that social justice is not a competition. Uh, we applaud all the young people who get engaged. Is it important that we have more voices? Uh, we are one vehicle that people can plug into. There are many other vehicles as there should be. There have always been other vehicles. In NAACP, our mission is very clear and we continue to uh, chart a course based on that mission. One person noticeably absent, the President of the United States. We do not have what we believe is an ally in the White House. We don't believe that we have someone who is concerned, unfortunately, for, you know, the truth of the matter is. And you still don't have one. And you still don't have one. You know what the president of the United States was doing, Mr. Donald Trump, at that time? Because this is an old clip. I'm going to tell you what he was doing. He was letting black people out of prison. That's what he was doing. He was doing the actual work. That's why he wasn't, he wasn't at the meeting. He was doing the work that you guys haven't done in the last 10 to 15 years in WACP. That's where he was. That's where Trump was at. Trump was actually doing the, 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 the real uh, work. He was letting black people out of prison and dropping the unemployment for black people down to historic lows. He was doing the work in WACP while you were sitting up here wanting a meeting he was doing the work. He was the real activist because you guys haven't been activated in the last 10 to 15 years. You can't make this stuff up. These people have the audacity and the nerves where they haven't done nothing for black people in the last 10 to 15 years. And they're going to say something about a president that has done more than you have done in the last 10 to 15 years. They got us really in the pickle. They got us really. We can't trust nobody. We can't even trust the NWACP no more. It's, it's sad. It's just sad. African Americans are not at the top of anyone's political agenda. I walked in here today to the NWACP, and I think there's a lot of people that are talking about things that they can do in their communities. There's something that has to change, and there's some, some and I know there's a groundswell of, of activism and people that are just fed up. President Trump and a lot of people that are for him are just ill-informed about the African-American community. And I believe they mean well, but perception is 100% of reality. And at this point, his perception of the African-American community is just unfair. <laughs> yeah, I bet you wouldn't say that now. I bet you wouldn't say that now. <laughs> I bet you wouldn't say that now. How has Donald Trump's presidency changed activism in your mind, or maybe changed priorities? Our uh, civil rights, if they're not enforced, if our um, children are not safe in our communities, if our young people are gunned down, if our men are killed, those things actually matter. And so I think right now, you know, yes, jobs are critical, education is critical, but safety is critical, humanity is Did you see what I'm saying? This is the brainwashing that's going on. Did you see what she said? She said that economics really didn't matter. You know why? Because she knew that he was doing good on economics. Don't you notice at that time when Trump was president, she would make his strong points look weak. And she would say, well, it's more about safety. Honey, haven't you realized and came to the understanding that the best weapon you have against any kind of racism is having a strong economy. Ask the Jewish people. They didn't go after the activism. They went after the finance. They went after the money. They built banks. They built economic power. And that's why they're almost untouchable by racism. 
because they took the economic route. So what Trump was doing for us, putting us on a path to economics, is better of a weapon than what you're talking about. Come on, man. It's critical. And those are the things that we have to make sure that we don't lose sight of.